Hello, this is Father Rich. I'm coming to you from the sacristy at Our Lady of Peace Church to talk with you about num our next uh, masterpiece that every Christian should know. This one is number 11, The Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse, a woodcut by Albert Durer in uh, 1498. I'm here in the doors of the sacristy, I think of the servers, and one of the, <clears throat> maybe a time that we're reinforced to uh, use praying hands and um, uh, many times depicted like this, we think of maybe our first communion students, but also our altar servers are encouraged to, to fold their hands like this or like this, the praying hands of worship. And this um, masterpiece that we're discussing, the, uh, another well-known, in fact, I first came to know this artist, uh, Albert uh, Durer, through, uh, I always forget, Albrecht Durer, uh, through his depiction, his um, ink, uh, drawing of praying hands and you can check that out but the masterpiece today is the four horsemen of the apocalypse um, Durer lived in obviously the 1400s the time of the printing press the 1440s or thereabouts so he started to see the use of the printing press and uh, he grew up with parents who were um, skilled in different types of artwork and gold work and, and other things and so kind of followed in those footsteps but would use um, the printing press to his advantage in helping create his own books. He could do his own prints and create books. In fact, they say he was the first to take uh, make use of the new te technology of printing as an artist. So again, many of these masterpieces are kind of the pioneers in new types of work, works of art. So again, the woodcut, he actually made his own book in, um, as we heard, 1498. 15 depictions of the book of Revelation, uh, one of which the, the most famous or what the author of this book would say is the best of those was the Apocalypse, the Four Horsemen. And, and the author talks about how in this time period of the 1400s in Germany, where the, where the artist is from, a lot of upheaval between plagues and religious uh, wars and turmoil. You saw the rise of the Reformation. You see the martyrdom of the reformers. Um, who they say that this um, Durer, Albrecht Durer, was sympathetic to the reformers uh, that were reacting to the Catholic Church and some of their extreme stances. Um, and so, kind of saw this up as an apocalyptic time, kind of the people wondering if this was the end. And then plus the, the, uh, the threat of the Muslim uh, Turks right on the border of the German territory. So all of these things had a lot of and obviously the length of life wasn't very long and, and had the people wondering, you know, could the, the second coming be upon them? So this uh, depiction of Revelation 6 in this, this artwork that we see, I'm actually going to show it to you. It's very well done um, and really a vivid depiction. But they talk about the summary of it, which I thought the author did a nice job. It's a nightmare vision of the awful terror to be faced at the end of time, as predicted in Revelation 6. Durer shows us pestilence on a white horse with bow and arrow, war on a red horse with sword in hand, famine on a black horse carrying empty scales, and death as a skeletal form riding a pale horse and brandishing a scythe. Humankind is being trampled in their wake as they come sweeping into the scene from out of the shadows. To his contemporaries, Durer's images were vivid, symbolic depictions of realities that they knew all too well. Because he illustrated the horsemen with realistic detail, they took on even greater resonance. So, um, really uh, well known. I was never, I wasn't familiar with uh, this this art piece. It's the first one that we've come across that I actually am learning about for the first time. Uh, but they say that how this artist Durer. He, he, was, he was very well versed in geometry and even in, um, in other types of science. So he wrote his own books on these things. So he really had a unique uh, idea on perspective and again, used his, the printing press to his advantage to help uh, to send these books out and to promulgate kind of his, his artwork. Uh, he did other artworks on St. Jerome and his study, other woodcuts, uh, uh, other much produced, the, the praying hands, as I mentioned, Adam and Eve, Night, Death, and the Devil, and the Mysterious Melancholia the First. 
So he really had unique observational powers. He was a man of great faith, but again was sympathetic to the reformers and struggled with what he would also agree was corruption in the Catholic Church. And just through his, his uh, piety and his efforts, would try to advance that in his drawings. So we, uh, every generation is tempted to think it's the second coming could be coming. I, I talk to people now and they wonder, they're trying to figure out the signs. We've had several times throughout my priesthood where people have wondered, is this the time, most specifically the millennium of 2000, right in the time I was in the seminary. I always tell people the, the thing to worry about is what Jesus said. You don't, you don't know the day or the hour, be prepared. Live today as if it's every it's the last moment um, that we have and, and God will take care of the rest. Live in the moment, live in God's presence, do what's right and good and, um, and God will take care of the rest. I think of the, I'll end my, my little talk with you on what we have put up in the sacristy. If you can see that quote, which the priests are encouraged to see as we go out. And, and this is the way to live every day, but also every to approach every mass. So priest of God, celebrate this mass as if it were your first mass, your last mass, your only mass. And it would, we could translate that, live today, as if it's your first day, your last day, your only day. And that will have us ready no matter when the second coming is. So that's our ninth uh, piece on the Four Horsemen of the Apocalypse by Albrecht Durer. Our next uh, masterpiece will be The Garden of Earthly Delights by Heronius Bosch, which is a painting. This is another new um, painting that I'm getting exposed to. So I look forward to that. Please join me. Thank you for coming, joining us today. Have a great day. God bless.